Hello, dear students. I, Mrs. Rajeshri Naik, welcomes you again in online lecture series arranged by Gokhale Education Society's BYK College of Commerce, Nasik. In the last online lecture, we have covered introduction part of chapter five, that is forms of market, definition of market, features of market, and classification of market. and expected questions on the same today in this online lecture we will study the next part of the chapter number 5 so in this lecture we are going to study about classification of market on the basis of competition in that perfect competition features of perfect competition price determination under perfect competition and expected questions now see the chart in the last lecture we have gone through classification of market on the basis of place and time today we will see the next classification on the basis of competition we will cover the first part that is perfect competition on the basis of competition competition among the sellers and buyers is the most important criteria for classification of markets in economics accordingly there are perfect markets and imperfect markets the essential characteristic of perfect market is the prevalence of uniform price for the commodity on the other hand different prices prevail for the product in imperfect markets imperfect competition may have several forms such as monopoly duopoly oligopoly monopolistic competition etc these various forms of markets are classified on the basis of number of sellers or the number of buyers in the market the nature of the product or the degree of competition let us study the various types of markets on the basis of competition among the sellers perfect competition meaning and definition perfect competition is an ideal and imaginary concept of market rather than an actual market according to mrs john robinson perfect competition prevails when the demand for the output of each producer is perfectly elastic perfect competition is a market situation where there are large number of buyers and sellers buying and selling homogeneous products at single uniform price perfect competition is an idealistic or imaginary concept and not a real one perfect competition may be applicable to certain farm products and that too for certain period and may be in a selective part of the market john robinson defines perfect competition as the state of affairs in which the demand for the output of an individual seller is perfectly elastic a perfectly competitive market is one in which the number of buyers and sellers is very large all the buyers and sellers are engaged in buying and selling a homogeneous product without any restrictions moreover both buyers and sellers possess perfect knowledge of market conditions let us see the features of perfect competition first feature large number of buyers and sellers under perfect competitions there are large number of sellers and buyers the number of seller is so large that a single seller cannot influence the market supply and the number of buyers 
is so large that a single buyer cannot influence the market demand. Each buyer and seller is a price taker who has to accept the price in the market, which is determined by the forces of demand and supply. A single seller can sell any quantity of commodity at a given price. A single buyer can also buy any quantity of commodity at a given price. Second feature, homogeneous product. An important feature of a perfectly competitive market is that the product sold is homogeneous. The product sold in the market is homogeneous, means what? That is identical in all respects, such as shape, size, color, taste, design, quality, etc. The products are perfectly substitutable for each other, and therefore, no buyer is attached to a particular seller. Hence, the price of the product is also uniform and no seller will charge a higher price for the same commodity. All the firms belonging to the industry must buy selling identical products and hence uniform price must rule throughout the market for that product. Next feature, free entry and exit. There are no barriers to the entry and exit of firms. There must prevail free entry into the market and free exit out of the market. This implies that any firm which wants to enter that industry must be free to do so. There should be no restriction or difficulty for a new firm to enter the industry or an existing firm to quit the industry. There should be no barriers to entry. For instance, if the existing sellers start making abnormal profits, new sellers would enter the market freely. This will bring down the abnormal profits to the normal level. Similarly, when the sellers make heavy losses, they may leave the market. However, such Free entry or free exit is possible only in the long run, but not in the short run. Okay, now the next feature, single price. A single uniform price prevails under perfect competition, which is determined by the interaction of demand and supply. The single firm takes its price from the industry and is consequently referred to as a price taker. The industry is composed of all firms in the industry and the market price is where market demand is equal to market supply. Each single firm must charge this price and cannot diverge from it. Next feature, perfect knowledge of market. The buyers and sellers possess a perfect knowledge about the market condition. Under perfect competition, it is necessary to assume that there is perfect knowledge on the part of buyers and sellers about the market conditions, price of the product, features of the product, quality of the product, cost of production, supply position, etc. As a result, no buyer will be prepared to pay a price higher than the prevailing price. And sellers will not charge a price higher or lower than the prevailing price. In the absence of perfect knowledge about market conditions on the part of buyers, different prices may be charged to different buyers for the same product if they don't have perfect knowledge. The ignorance of either buyer or seller cannot be exploited. Therefore, a single price would prevail in the entire market. Hence, perfect knowledge prevents price discrimination. The next feature is perfect mobility of 
factors of production there is perfect mobility of factors of production under perfect competition yet another assumptions of perfect competition is that there must be prevail perfect mobility of factors of production this implies that the factors of production such as see the pick land such as labor and capital are free to move from one place to work to the other labor can move from one employer to the other and the entrepreneur can move from one industry to the other it does ensures that the factor cost are the same for all firms and ensures that all firms get equal advantages hence a uniform price rules the entire market however factors will move to that industry which pays the highest remuneration this will result in optimum use of each factor input okay so the next feature absence of transport cost in perfect competition price is uniform because we assume that transport cost does not exist it is assumed that all the sellers are equally near or far away from the markets and as such there are uniform transport cost to all the sellers if transport cost are involved then the prices of homogeneous goods would tend to differ hence absence of transport cost become an important assumption to have uniform price of homogeneous products in all parts of market in this markets it is assumed that all the firms or producers work sufficiently close to each other they do not incur transport cost or the transport cost bond is the same or does not add to the cost of production so it is assumed that the transport cost is absent or constant for all the sellers okay now the next feature no government intervention laissez faire policy is an important feature of perfect competition there is no government intervention in respect of production transportation and exchange of goods in other words there are no government restrictions the market forces of demand and supply are freely allowed to determine the price in the market in other words we can say that there is no government intervention that is there are no taxes subsidies control on supply of raw materials etc this condition is essential to allow free entry of firms or sellers and for the automatic adjustment of the market forces of demand and supply okay now the next part price determination under perfect competition the interaction of demand and supply determine price of the commodity in perfect competition this is known as equilibrium price marshall has compared the process of price determination the cutting of cloth with a pair of scissors just as both the blades of scissors are required to cut the cloth both the forces of demand and supply are essential to determine the equilibrium price in the market under perfect competition there exists a single price for a particular product in the entire market this price is called as equilibrium price equilibrium price is that price at which the demand for a commodity is equal to its supply equilibrium price is determined by the interaction of the forces of demand and supply in the market in a perfectly competitive market there is only one price of a commodity and it is known as equilibrium price under perfect competition price is determined by interaction of the market forces demand and supply so the sellers want to sell their products 
at the highest possible price and the buyers want to buy the goods at the lowest possible price so price is determined at a point where the market forces of demand and supply interact and exchange takes place the price at which demand is equal to supply is known as equilibrium price okay now this is explained with the help of the following schedule and diagram okay see the schedule table number 5.1 demand and supply schedule when price rises from rupees 100 to rupees 200 quantity demanded falls from 5000 kg to 4000 kg whereas supply increases from 1000 kg to 2000 kg this is because demand falls with rise in price and supply rises with rise in price this is stage where demand is greater than supply when price rises to rupees 300 quantity demanded and quantity supply become equal that is 3000 kg this is the stage of equilibrium where demand and supply become equal hence rupees 300 becomes the equilibrium price third point about the schedule when price further rises from rupees 400 to rupees 500 demand falls from 2000 kg to 1000 kg and supply rises from 4000 kg to 5000 kg so thus supply is greater than demand okay now the process of price determination is explained in the following figure 5.2 in this diagram x axis represents quantity demanded and quantity supply whereas y axis represents the price dd is the downward sloping demand curve which shows inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded ss is the upward sloping supply curve which shows direct relationship between price and quantity supply e is the equilibrium point where dd and ss curve intersect each other accordingly rupees 300 is the equilibrium price and 3000 kg is the equilibrium quantity demanded and supply this equilibrium price is determined by market demand and market supply okay so students expected questions answer in detail question number 1 explain the meaning of perfect competition with its features question number 2 explain the meaning of perfect competition and explain the price determination under perfect competition so today we have learned and acquired knowledge on classification of market on the basis of competition and expected questions about the same in the next online lecture we will go with remaining part of classification of market that is imperfect competition do take good care of yourself thank you